So I'm here at IHP visiting for the Free Silicon Conference and as part of that we've got a bunch of cool tables here and we're going to be talking to some other people at IHP and find out what they're doing, what they're working on. So, Emilio. Hi. Nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. Tell us a little bit about what you do at IHP. Yeah, sure. Basically, I'm uh, in charge of electrical characterization of uh, resistive RAMs. Okay. So I basically do a lot of lab work. Mm -hmm. And um, lately, I'm focused on uh, testing them under harsh conditions, so radiation or cryogenic temperatures, uh, high temperature. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I basically put them a bit in a hassle and see how they behave. Okay, you've got actually a little model here of yeah, resistive exactly. RAM. So maybe you can just explain for people who don't know what resistive sure. RAM is. Yeah, so basically they are a metal insulator metal stack. That means that uh, we have some uh, titanium nitride layers. They are around 150 nanometers, so they are really thin. Uh, sandwiching a half immune oxide layer that is not here really represented just to mm -hmm. observe the defects here. It's uh, in the range of five nanometers, so also really thin. And uh, the idea is that we introduce defects. Mm -hmm. So in this case, oxygen vacancies that are represented here as uh, these red balls. And by applying some uh, 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 voltage stimuli, we can control the creation or disruption of a conductive bridge mm -hmm which is based on this oxygen vacancy. So here you can see uh, we can achieve a high resistive state. So this conductive bridge is completely broken. So the electricity, let's say, has a difficult time to go through. So the resistance is high. If we switch the polarity of our voltage stimuli and we recreate this filament, uh, we, we can uh, in reduce uh, the, the resistance of our resistive RAM. Mm. Uh, achieving both resistance state. And in this way, we can encode information, zero or one, mm -hmm. into resistive states. And one thing I just found out from talking to you yesterday yeah. is that actually you can program the resistance. So this is one reason why people are interested in it for like neuromorphic stuff. Yeah, exactly. So um, by controlling, let's say, the morphology of this uh, uh, conducted bridge, mm -hmm. we can achieve different resistive levels. So not only uh, high or low resistive state, but somewhere in between. Mm. This uh, open up so the, the, the window to um, the multi-level approach so we can store more than one bit per cell. Mm. So this will ultimately increase the density of uh, the memory units based on, on this technology. And of course, it has uh, big advantages for uh, vector matrix multiplication accelerators or artificial neural networks mm. uh, implementations in general. Great. Fantastic. So one of the cool things about this um, table is we've actually got a little demonstration here. So Emilio, Emilio tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on with, on the bench. Yeah, so it's a relatively simple setup. Uh, we have a PCB where we place our resistive RAM uh, array. Uh, which is packaged in this uh, in this DIL24 package. And then uh, we have a series of uh, devices that will, first of all, uh, this source measurement unit uh, will generate the signals that will program, will control this, let's say, creation and disruption of the filament. Then we have a power supply uh, just to, to bias the, the transistor and uh, turn on, let's say, the, 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 the control of the, of the array. And then we have this uh, switching matrix that will uh, externally drive the uh, signals to the specific pins in our mm -hmm. in our array. Um, so we can perform set and reset uh, easily through our computer. It's everything, like say, uh, controlled via Ethernet and Python code. And on the chip, is it just the reram array, or do you have any other con control circuitry on there? So in this specific example, we only have a RAM array because, uh, as I mentioned, we mostly use this setup to test uh, the device under harsh conditions. So we really want to isolate the effect of these conditions in our RAM array. So we get rid of any peripheral circuitry. We put it everything externally, so all the addressing. So we only have RAM arrays in okay. this way. A any, let's say, alteration, any any uh, issue we might see, it comes exactly from, from our RAM devices. Great. So are you ready to give us a demo? Yeah, sure. Demo time. So our device right now is in the low resistive state. And um, uh, I'm going to perform a reset operation that I'm going to execute here in my Python code. And now, if we check our SMU, we can observe how the current is high until reaching a point where the current drops indicating that the resistance increase and uh, we could observe a resistive uh, resistance change the resistive switching that we could observe in our uh, model here 
Um, yeah, so uh, we move the device from the low resistive state to the high resistive state. We perform the opposite operation, so the set operation, we will move the device from the high resistive state to the low resistive state. I'm gonna execute it here. And again, if we check our source measurement unit, we will see how the current is low until reaching a threshold where the current spikes and gets controlled by the transistor connected in series and uh, we achieve a low resistive state. And we can re observe here the memory window that indicates that our device switch from one state to the other. This is a non-volatile uh, type of memory, so our state will stay there for a long time. So thanks very much, Emilio, for you showing us your excellent reram demo and uh, looking forward to seeing what our audience has to say about it. If you've got any comments or questions, then just leave them down below.